Welcome back to Sprouting Spoons online cooking class. Uh, because it's now officially September, we are probably realizing that our gardens are overwrought with giant zucchinis! And as delicious as zucchinis are, once they get to this size, there's only a few things you can really do with them. And today, we're going to show you how to use them in zucchini bread. So today's recipe is super simple. All you're going to need is two mixing bowls, a spoon to mix everything together with, a metal box grater, a loaf pan, some zucchini, a quarter cup of walnuts, we're going to use chopped for this, two eggs, a quarter cup of almond meal, a half teaspoon of cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of cloves, a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, and a tablespoon of salt, half a cup of granulated sugar, a third cup of brown sugar, and when you measure that you're going to want to make sure that it's nice and compact, one and a quarter cup of all-purpose flour, and a third cup of applesauce. So the first step in your zucchini bread is to grate the zucchini. If you're using larger zucchini like we're going to be using today, you're going to want to take out the seeds because they become very tough and that's not good for your zucchini bread. If you're using smaller zucchinis, you're going to want to use one or two of the you know, normal smaller size zucchinis and you can go ahead and shred straight through the interior of it. So for this recipe, you need about one and a half cups of shredded zucchini. Because we are using this larger one, we're going to go ahead and cut it in half so we get an idea of where our seeds are. You notice we have a large seed cavity in here. That's going to contain all of the large tough seeds that we don't want to use. All we want to use is this outer ring on here. Uh, that's going to be a little bit more tender and will be perfect for the zucchini bread. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and take and slice right where we think it's going to be. And notice how we're only nipping the seeds just barely and this creates a nice flat surface so we can go ahead and square off the rest of our zucchini it's going to be about half an inch uh, deep for this one but each zucchini is going to be a little bit different If you notice you get a little bit too much of the seeds in there, you can always go through with a spoon and scrape that out. You can just take your spoon and gently pull across it and all those seeds will come straight out. Once you have that, you're ready to go ahead and grab your box grater and uh, peel or shred it, I suppose, is a better way of saying it. Uh, you don't want to get your hand in this because that's not going to be a uh, fun time at all. And you will have to throw out all of your zucchini. So once all of your zucchini is shredded, you're going to go ahead and add all of your liquid ingredients, being your zucchini, because it's sort of wet, right? Um, the applesauce, eggs, and we're going to include our sugar in this and we're going to stir that together in one of our uh, two bowls. If you have two different sizes, try to use a larger one for this. In your second bowl, you're going to combine all of your dry ingredients. So that's going to be your flour, your spices, salt, and your uh, leavening agent, this case being the baking powder. We're going to then use the walnuts and almond meal. Surprise, surprise, we're going to then add the two together. We're going to do this by adding the dry into the liquid, though. This allows it to uh, mix a, lot a, a little bit better. We come. Ooh. 
as you mix together your zucchini bread, it's important not to overdo it because that's going to create a tough and not very tasty little loaf there. So what you're going to want to do is just leave a little trace of unincorporated ingredients and then you're going to pour it into a prepared loaf pan. You can uh, prepare it by either using pan spray or you can go ahead and rub it with a stick of butter. So once it's in the pan, we're going to go ahead and put it in a preheated 350 degree oven for about an hour, but we're going to start checking it in about 50 minutes to make, see if it, our oven might be a little off temperature. And then we can bake anywhere up to about an hour and a half, honestly, depending on the size of your pan. So after about an hour, you should be able to use a skewer to poke it, and when it comes out clean, you're going to be able to know that it's done and then you can run a knife around it and pop it out of the pan. Now normally I would let it cool completely before I'd slice into it. It would create a nicer little crumb when you slice into it. However, it smells so delicious right now, I'm going to go ahead and slice in and take a big bite myself. Maybe you don't need to wait. That's great. We'll see you next time.